Number 57, an old light bulb draws only 50 watts rather than its original 60 watts due to evaporative thinning of its filament. By what factor is its diameter reduced, assuming uniform thin thinning along its length, neglect any effects, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So um, we're talking about by what factor is its diameter reduced. Now, if you look at the formulas on the right-hand side, there's only one formula that will have diameter in it. And you might be looking through the formulas and you're like, well, I don't see diameter. And you're right, I don't see diameter either directly, but I know diameter is going to be related to one of those variables over here in one of these formulas. Did you spot it? It's going to be found in this formula through the area. Okay? Right? Because that area represents cross-sectional area of the wire. So in other words, that the resistance flowing through a particular wire is equal to its resistivity multiplied by the length divided by then the cross-sectional area of the wire. And the wire we know has a cross-sectional area that is circular. And therefore, we can simply now write the area as pi r squared, because that represents the area of a circle. And now you might say, well, where's the diameter? I see the radius, but we have to remember the relationship between the radius and the diameter, that the radius is equal to half of the diameter. So all we now simply need to do is just plug that on in. So pi times now d over 2 squared. And then what I can do is simply square this whole thing. All right, I'm going to get something that looks kind of like this. The uh, resistance is equal to resistivity multiplied by length divided by then pi over 4 times now d squared. Now I know I want to find by what factor is the diameter changing. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring this diameter on out of the denominator on the right-hand side and up into the numerator on the left, and I'm going to bring the resistance on down, and basically I just did a cross-multiplication. All right. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I really don't need those parentheses anymore, so let's get rid of them. One second. Okay, so there's just d squared. Now I want to find just the diameter, so why don't we square root this, okay? So I square root everything, and I realize that d is going to be equal to now the square root of all this stuff, okay? Well, what I And I can distribute the square root to each term. However, though, I realize that there's only really one value here that's going to be changing, okay? And it's the resistance. The resistance is changing, okay? And the diameter is changing. So I know that basically... I have to figure out the relationship here between the changing diameter and the change in resistance. Okay? All this other stuff is noise. I can show it mathematically. It'll all cancel if I do D1 and D2 or initial and final. But I'm just showing you a different way to look at it. Just forget about all this stuff. That's not how the, um, the uh, diameter or the resistance will change. All right? In other words, what I'm telling you, what I'm what I'm mentioning is just look at it this way, that the change in diameter, by what factor that diameter changes, will be equal to then 1 over the square root of that change in the resistance. Okay? That's what's important to focus on. So now what that allows me to do is that allows me now to kind of focus my attention on trying to figure out how the radius has changed, by what factor. Okay? Uh, excuse me, not radius, I meant resistance. The R's are confusing me. So by what factor the resistance changed? Okay? Because I know that whatever factor the diameter changed by, the resistance would have changed by that same factor, but 1 over the square root of that factor. So, how do I figure that out if I just know the, how the watts have changed? Well, that means i got to find a formula that relates watts now to resistance. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this. All right? Um... One might be easier than the other. So just note that if you did this for, let's say you did it with this formula, you would have still been okay. All right, if you want to use this. However, the currents aren't really constant and what we would uh, then need to do is further substitutions, but we would have ended up with the same answer. So if you use this formula from here on out, that's fine. However, the better one to use is gonna be this one, V squared over R. And the reason why is because um, as I, as I might have just mentioned, I don't know if I did because I can't even remember the past 10 seconds, um, the current will not stay the same as the resistance changes. But what will stay the same here is the voltage. The voltage is being supplied by the power company, and the voltage isn't going to change. It's almost just, just think about it instead of, sometimes that's confusing, just pretend you have a 9-volt battery, right? You got a little 9-volt battery, you got the two terminals there. It's 9 volts. It's not 
it's not something different than that, no matter what apparatus or electronic device you hook it up to. The battery is going to supply 9 volts of potential. Okay? Technically, it'll be a little less. But it'll supply that. Okay? So the voltage is constant. So in other words, what I realize now, when we're saying, well, wait a minute, does that mean that I can take something like this, that the final power, I can take a ratio, that the final power divided by the initial power should equal then the voltage. It's not final voltage because it's constant. Divided by the final uh, resistance. That's all now divided by the voltage squared divided by the initial resistance. And does that mean if I have a fraction and a fraction, I can simply take this new numerator fraction and multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator? And yes, that is correct. We can simply take V squared over the final and multiply that now by the uh, initial resistance divided by V squared. Since the Vs are constant and unchanging, it cancels. So now we get the final power relative to the initial power will be equal to now the initial resistance divided by the final resistance. Okay? So now what we have is we just have to simply now plug this on in. Okay? So what is the... Um, let me actually... I realize that it might not be in the best because um, we really want to find... It doesn't... We want to find by what factor it, was it reduced. Okay. So essentially now what I need, because I know I need my changing R value in there, what I want to do is I want to solve this for RF over RI, because I want to know by what factor the diameter was reduced. That means I have to find out, essentially what I'm asking is I'm asking for DF over DI, and that would then be equal to 1 over square root of RF over RI, okay? So all I'm going to do is just flip this. Flip this side and flip this side. So that means it's PI now over PF is equal to RF over RI. Now I just simply have to plug in the powers. Right, The powers they told me, uh, the initial was 60, the final was 50, and that's equal to RF over RI. Now notice, I just simply got to plug this on in. Right, All I got to do is take this now result, because that's equal to RF over RI, and I plug it in. And voila. 1 over now square root of then 60 over 50. And what do we get? So 1 divided by second square root of 60 over 50. Oh, there it is, right? So we realize that the diameter now would have changed. I'm writing this all over the place. DF over DI, now I'm even further, um, is going to be equal to 0 0.913. So 0 0.913. That's how much the diameter would have decreased uh, to, all right? It would have decreased to about 91% of its original value, okay? So, by what factor is this diameter reduced? Actually, let me think. Is that technically answering the question? By what factor is its diameter reduced? Well, it's reduced to a factor. So I would say that the, uh, it, it depends on the wording. Wording's a little confusing. So um, the final diameter relative to the initial diameter has been reduced not by a factor of 0.193, but it was reduced to, all right, uh, 0.193 of its original. So I think that's an acceptable answer. I'm not sure if they want it, though, in terms of like a, percentage decrease. I don't know. But if you had to figure that out, all you'd have to do is basically subtract this from one. Okay. So I don't know. Yeah, that should be good. All right, guys. Um, anyway, I think I'm done with this problem. What do you think? I'm sure you're done with it as well. All right. So uh, hopefully this helped and I, I appreciate your watching and we'll see you soon. Take care.